It's Saturday, October 1st here at the West End Gun Club. It's a quarter till seven, and I'm out here at the Rimfire Range to do a run through of the October 2022 NRL 22 course of fire. Now, I usually do my courses or my run throughs of the course of fire for the following month right after our match for, the, for that actual month. So our match for September was last Sunday, fourth Sunday of the month, and I usually come out on Wednesdays to do the run through the following Wednesday, but I was out of town for a conference for work, so I could not come to the range on Wednesday to do a run through. So that's why I'm out here on Saturday. Uh, got back in from the conference on Thursday and then um, worked on Friday and then now I'm here at the range on Saturday. But um, it's Saturday, so there, I anticipate there will probably be a few people here at the Rimfire Range because, you know, this is when people can come out to the range on weekends. And so I'm occupying quite a bit of the range right now. So I'm going to go ahead and try to run through this relatively quickly in terms of my time here at the range. Um, so I don't, I'm not taking up all this space. But I'm going to go ahead and warm up my gun first, and then we'll go ahead and dive right into the October 2022 NRL 22 course of fire. first stage in the October 2022 NRL 22 course of fire we're going to go run through is called What Position What a Treat, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have uh, two banks of targets. We have a quarter inch and a three quarter inch KYL at 35 yards. And then we have a two inch and a three inch on a double hanger at 75 yards. Uh, no restrictions, 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. Start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a prone supported position or prone position and engage all targets with one shot each, starting with a KYL from large to small, then the far targets large to small. The shooter will then repeat the engagement. The final two shots will be taken at the quarter inch KYL target. Really straightforward, not much to say here. Uh, I feel this is from a difficulty standpoint, this is fairly easy, uh, but let's go ahead and run through it. So the stage is relatively simple. I ran it a couple times, although I'm gonna only show one run on this video. And uh, I finished really quickly at 73 seconds elapsed on the first run. And I missed the KYL target like uh, once on the, on the run. And so I just wanted to see, you know, just taking a little bit more time to adjust my parallax and uh, maybe even bump my magnification up on the final two shots to see if that helps out. But I think that sort of breaks your rhythm. And I don't recommend doing that. I figured just shoot it the same way as you did uh, the first, the KYL, the first few shots. Uh, I think uh, once you're in your rhythm, don't try to break it. And if you try to, I guess, squeeze that, the you know, squeeze the accuracy out of the last few shots on this stage by trying to bump up magnification, I think you might just throw yourself off. Um, I, I shot a little bit better, but at the same time, 
I don't think it's worth the worth the effort. So anyway, really straightforward stage. Not much else to say here. It's all about just uh, being able to switch between targets. And I think if you want to, you could probably go ahead and adjust your elevation. I recommend adjusting parallax though, because 35 and 75 is a little bit of a quite a bit of a difference. Um, you can probably get away with just holding your parallax for 35 and then shooting on the 75 yard targets, but I would I would highly recommend probably adjusting your parallax just a little bit. Um, but definitely stay set your parallax for the 35 perfectly because quarter inch target is pretty small even at 35 yards. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next stage of fire. The next stage of fire we're going to run through is called a trick and a treat. 120 second part time, 12 rounds. We have two targets, a three inch at 63 yards and a six inch at 100 yards. Uh, you're going to get bonus time. This is the bonus stage. So if you get, uh, if you have finished with extra time on the clock under 120 seconds, you get a tenth of a tenth of a point bonus. Uh, no restrictions here. We're going to start standing, rifle, and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On start signals, the shooter will engage the targets with two shots each from near to far in the following order. Left half of the sawhorse, middle of the sawhorse, right half of the sawhorse. So they made it pretty distinct. So. You obviously half, you just bisect it, and so you're going to go left half, middle, right half. The shooter must perform a magazine change after the second shot, but before the 11th shot. The shooter will yell done to stop the timer. So basically, uh, two targets, two shots each from each position, so that's a total of 12 rounds. So 2-2, two, 2-2, two, 2-2. Two, 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 two. Uh, pretty straightforward. I guess the, the kind of the stipulation here is got to do a mag change after... You just can't fire a one shot and do a mag change, and you can't just fire, uh, do a mag change before your last shot. They want you to do it somewhere in between, uh, which is fine. Uh, let's go ahead and run through it. Seems pretty straightforward. In the grand scheme of things, this stage is pretty easy. The targets are huge. Three inch at 63 yards and a six inch at 100 yards. I shot it pretty sloppily. You can do a lot of other things to game this stage, like at getting the mega bag or a big pump pillow to sort of support your shooting arm or, your, or whatnot with, against your body or against your knee if you want to put a knee up. But you can just sort of balance the gun on the uh, sawhorse and shoot this yeah, it's without any issues. It's... I think if anything, you might miss because you're going to shoot it way too sloppily than you should. Like you're not going to, you're going to let your fundamentals go to crap because it's so big. Um, you know, the, the whole mantra of miss, aim small, miss small. I'm sort of, you're looking at a huge target, so you're kind of aiming big, so you might miss big, right? So I think that's probably the one thing that could mess you up mentally. But just hold center. I mean, I just held, I dialed. Uh, 0.3 for 63 yards and I held roughly 1.5 1.6 to get to uh, to get to uh, 100 just to cover the colder weather today because I might need 1.8 but I think I was shooting a little bit high on target with my holds so if anything I should probably bleed a little bit under but again it's a relatively simple stage don't overthink it just just hold it hard and you should be good um, again try to aim aim for the center if you can so you aim small, miss small, and then when you're holdovers for the 100, because you're not going to dial elevation. You should not dial elevation. You're just going to waste your time. 
um, just hold over correctly and you should be fine. But it's a relatively simple stage. And I finished with 80.73 laps, so nearly 40, 40 seconds remaining. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next stage of fire. The next stage of fire we're going to run through is called Choose Two Candy Buckets. 120 second part time with only nine rounds. We have two banks of targets. We have a one inch and a two and a half inch at 50 yards, and we have a five inch on a single hanger at 100 yards. Uh, no real restrictions here, 10 points per impact, 90 points possible. You're gonna start standing, rifle, and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a position on one of the barricades where we have the 55 gallon barrel, the five gallon bucket, and the two gallon bucket. Uh, we'll take a position on one of the barricades and engage the near targets from large to small with one shot each, then the far target with one shot. The shooter will then repeat the engagement from a different barricade. The shooter will then repeat the engagement from the first barricade. One barricade will not be used. All shots are hit to move on. Uh, pretty straightforward, hit to move on. Uh, you're going to only use two of them. I anticipate at the West End Gun Club, since we're shooting at a four degree up angle, uh, for that far target, most people will probably opt for the taller targets because it's just easier to look up. Um, so I personally will be shooting off the 55 gallon barrel and then the five gallon bucket. That's just in my head, that's how I'm gonna shoot it. And you can already see how I've got my rifle here pre-staged. Probably gonna shoot it like this, but let's try it and see how it goes. Choose two candy buckets, relatively simple stage. Uh, nine shots hit to move on. I used, as you saw my run, I shot off the 55 gallon barrel with the bipod, brought all the way full, uh, as far back on my, my rail as I could. Um, actually, no, I could have gotten farther. I didn't, I probably should have gotten a little bit farther back. Oops. Should have probably come back a little bit more um, to get a little bit more of the bucket. I guess to get a little bit tighter on the bucket, so I should have ran a little bit farther back on the magwell. However, um, it helped me out on here just to get a little bit more stable off the five gallon bucket because I shot it with my bipod splayed over the bottom edges here. And if I need to take a quick look at the diagram, I am curious, yeah, buckets are down. It looks like the 55 gallon barrel is face up, but if you notice in the picture, they have a lid on the barrel. We do not have a lid on ours, so I have to run it face down. Anyway, um, that's how I ran it. I anticipate some people may opt to shoot off the five gallon and a two gallon barrel, or sorry, two gallon bucket. Assume they're shooting on flat ground. If they're shooting off level ground, I would probably opt to just shoot off these buckets and I would shoot this quasi, uh, I would be like in a, in a crouched position like this on my knees and just shooting like this, kind of a kneeling prone type position off those two. But given we're shooting at a four degree angle for that far target, the 100 yard target, it's easier to shoot at an up angle uh, off of the two tallest uh, barricades. It's going to be a pain. You'll end up shooting prone off the two gallon. And I guess some people may opt to do that. Maybe run a bag on top 
and just shoot prone off of this to shoot up. Um, and maybe do it for both of these positions. I just don't like to do that. I just it feels uncomfortable to me. Uncomfortable to me. And I'd rather just shoot out the five gallon barrel buck or five gallon barrel if I can, because you're just kind of more upright. Anyway, I finished with 93 seconds elapsed, so plenty of time here. Um, just make sure you get stable positions, and you should be fine. Uh, let's go and move on to the next stage. The next stage of fire we're running through is called trick or treat each block twice. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We only have one target, it's a three inch at 100 yards. Uh, the restrictions are here, no part of the rifle or equipment can touch the ground when shooting off the cinder blocks. So it's pretty interesting, you can't use a rear bag uh, for the, when you're shooting off the cinder blocks. But this is an interesting stage, I was looking at the layout and it looks pretty cool. So you're gonna start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target with one shot from the following position. So there's a diagram here, so you're gonna follow this pretty closely here. Uh, so I'll just run through it. You're gonna shoot prone, left of the center block facing downrange, one sh uh, shot, one, then two at this point here on the center block, three on, this, on top center block, four on this right side of the center block, then five on the ground right of the center block, then six, same thing, so five and six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you're basically working your way up left to right and back. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and what you're doing, it's just you can't use a rear bag, so uh, this could be a problem for some people because you can't use rear support, uh, especially when you're going to be shooting at an up angle. So you're pretty much going to have to just use your hand and try to make the best of it is trying to get your stable position here. Uh, but this should be interesting. It kind of keeps things uh, keeps things simple in terms of your equipment, I guess. Uh, but let's go ahead and try to run through it. I have an idea of how I'm going to do it, at least for the uh, cinder blocks. But we'll see. Let's see how it goes. Weird. I didn't see an impact. I heard it though. That was left. This stage proved to be quite difficult, comparatively speaking, to the first three stages we went through today. Uh, so far, I, you're changing position every time, which adds to complexity, except for five and six. You're shooting from the same spot for the fifth and sixth shot. However, um, you can't use rear support when you're off the cinder blocks. I ended up not using rear support off of the bipod, be, off the ground, because you didn't really need it. However, from the uh, when we're shooting on, off the cinder blocks, at least from the top one and shooting at up angle, there's, not really, there's really no support here, and I'm trying to angle it up four degrees, so that kind of gets us wobble here. What I probably could have done is, at least for my gun, get this bipod forward, really far forward, and then get my get this bag, if I can, because I have weights on here, the side weights that hit the uh, thumb rest here. But I should have tried to get this bag a little bit farther forward on the gun. So what that would have done for me 
is would have allowed me to rest my gun a little bit forward, more forward on the gun and I can have the stock farther back and at least have a little bit more of a way to kind of try to shoot a prone position or a squatted prone like this and have more of the gun back here lower to the ground with this up angle and try to support it in this manner. I might have been able to do it like this so I might change up my position like this come match time but we'll see. I'm probably gonna practice this a little, little bit uh, in future rain sessions but for now uh, I've got some ideas here but I just wanted to uh, run through it today and make sure I have the stage is set up correctly for our, our range facility here but uh, this is going to probably be the most difficult stage so people should practice this one when they get an opportunity. Anyway let's go ahead and move on to the final stage of fire that we need to run through. Last stage of fire we're going to run through is called the frightful number of targets. We have many targets here, uh, 10 total targets on five banks. Uh, it's 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have a half inch and one inch KOL at 61 yards. We have a one inch and a one and a half at 69. We have a one and a half and a two inch at 82. We have a two inch and a two and a half at 92. And we have a two and a half and a four inch at 100 yards. Uh, 10 points per impact, 100 points possible, no restrictions on equipment right here. We're going to start standing, rifle, and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a position on any rung of the ladder and engage the targets from near to far large to small. Near to far, large to small. Uh, I believe it's just hit or miss move on. Just shoot from one of the rungs and for I can already tell you everyone's going to shoot off. Most likely shoot from the, from the uh, bottom rung and just shoot prone. See, seems simple enough. However, the targets are very small. Half inch is 61 yards. It's not an easy target. Uh, the targets are scaled down accordingly so it may seem simple but you've got to have an accurate shooting gun. And full disclosure, I've been having flyers for some reason for the past uh, few sessions and I don't know why. I'm not entirely sure if I damaged my gun or something or if I need to really clean it or if my ammo just does not want to sync with this or if my chassis is causing some harmonics issue with the gun. Um, haven't really talked about it much but I am getting these crazy flyers um, and my gun isn't really grouping well. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. I anticipate that you need to have a very accurate gun in order to shoot this, in order to clean this stage. Um, but we'll try it today. I'm, I anticipate I'm going to miss a few shots uh, right now. But let's go ahead and try it. And I, full disclosure, I'm going to be shooting prone as well. So I'm going to shoot prone off the bottom rung. That's like the easiest way and we'll see how I can run this. Barely clipped it. Drop two rounds. This stage is relatively simple, even though you have small targets that are scaled pretty small for the nearer targets, you only have to shoot off one rung and you don't have to make any movements. So generally you're just going to pick the, prone, the, the bottom rung and shoot prone like I did. Um, if you're shooting flat ground, you'll just need a taller bag of course, uh, but it should be relatively stable. And I had no real issues here. Uh, at the first run, I missed a couple shots. I think I missed two shots. and. Uh, one for sure I missed the KYL, the, the half inch KYL, and I think I just barely grazed one, one round here. I don't know, I'm not entirely sure, but either way, 
I didn't dial elevation, I just did holdovers. And the second time around, I decided to try to dial it, and I missed two rounds because I dialed wrong. Because um, the way I write my, my, on my dough card, which is very messy here because it's, a, it's an old card and I didn't wipe it very well, <laughs> I, miss, I misinterpreted my numbers and I dialed uh, too little for the 82-yard uh, target. So I think you can be fine either way. You have plenty of time to dial. Uh, just, don't, just don't make mistakes um, when you're dialing elevation. Uh, and if you're going to do holdovers, you should be fine. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Uh, we're going to go ahead and tear down, and uh, we'll start wrapping up this range vlog. About to pack up the rest of my gear and wrap up this rain session. As far as the October 2022 NRL22 course of fire, uh, only one stage should cause people any real problems. The rest of them should be pretty straightforward and not too difficult. Um, one of the stages that I can't remember names off the top of my head, I guess I can reach my clipboard, but the one with the, all the, with five targets at five banks or 10 targets and five banks, that one may cause people some problems if their gun is not shooting well, like if it's not shooting accurately enough, cause there are a couple small targets on that one. Um, but the center block stage is going to be the most problematic one as far as just trying to get all your rounds down range in a stable manner. Um, and the rest of them are pretty simple, so I anticipate this should be a good. I mean, this should be a good match for, for beginners. It's not. It's eh, beginner to moderately difficult. Uh, I think it's a good, good mix of easy and difficult stages for people, which should keep people who are still novices not too frustrated. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. I gotta run one errand on the way home, and uh, then I'll try to cut this vlog. I know my. My, uh, six, my SIG Kilo 6K review is still pending. I'm gonna try to release that tomorrow or Monday. And uh, we'll see if I can get that out there. I just wanna, I need to tweak a few things in, my, in the uh, article. And then, uh, yeah. And I'm gonna try to relax the rest of the day. I, I'm gonna go to Saturday Mass. Some I'm Catholic, so I do Saturday evening Masses usually. Uh, and sort of relax, I'm kind of worn out. Um, went to a conference in Vegas, a security conference. And I know it's, it wasn't too exhausting in terms of, you know, just attending a conference and listening to people talk, but, you know, it's just the whole traveling, you know, driving to Vegas and then having to deal with hotels. And, you know, I don't sleep well in hotel beds, really. I, know, I, usually, I usually bring earplugs, too. I have to wear earplugs just so I don't get kind of uh, distracted by people in the hallways. Because you can hear a door slam, too, sometimes. And, then, you know the pipes or whatever and different, you know, different floors, different rooms can cause like some noises. And I just, you know, and then you got the strip noise, like st lots of, you know, it's Las Vegas Boulevard, you got noise on the strip. Sometimes they got loud music and it just, yeah, depending on where your room's at. So I, you know, it ends up being exhausting. And then hotel food, not too bad. Um, we, it was catered. So the conference, it was catered at the Aria. Food was all right, um, free, free alcohol, but I didn't really drink too much. Uh, plus I had a headache too, cause I had to stop neck pain from from the from after the match and worked out the the monday morning pro after the match after the nrl 22 match we had on sunday and i just had this like shoulder pain it was just shooting up into my neck and that was just causing me issues so i was trying to try not to move my head too much so i wouldn't ca aggravate this migraine in the back of my head anyway i'm still recovering from that um just sort of getting my energy back anyway that's it for like the non-shooting stuff uh i should have the uh it's, it's october 1st so I should have the match registrations open for the October match open uh, in two more weeks, week, two weeks, two weeks, I think. I open up two weeks prior to the actual match day. And as far as any other shooting, I'm not really planning on the coming out. I may, I want to resolve. I don't know what's going on with my gun, to be honest. I'm worst case scenario. I jacked up my barrel cleaning it, which is unlikely. Uh, next case scenario is it for some reason it just doesn't like the ammo. Uh, I mean, it could happen. Like, barrels change, right? Sometimes your ammo just doesn't shoot the same as it did before. Um, barrel conditions change. But in Rimfire, it's, it's not really well known for that to happen. But you never know. Third scenario is, for some reason, this chassis, my gun doesn't shoot well in this chassis for some reason. But it's actually gotten worse. It gets, it's fine. It's, some, it, it's sporadic. So I have to figure out. Maybe i got to tighten some stuff up. Who knows? Maybe I'll just take it out and put it back in the BA comp just to resolve, to, to eliminate that as a factor. Fourth is my scope. I do have another ZC uh, 450, or ZC 527. I mean, I can probably put my, that scope on here and make sure it's not the scope, but I highly doubt it's a scope. Um, there's just a lot of different 
things I can eliminate as far as what could be the worst case scenario. And then, um, I mean, the best case scenario, I just need to clean the gun. But I'm going to go ahead and just clean it when I get home and then try to figure out what's going on. Maybe I'll come out to the range and I won't really record it, the session, but I may just come out to the range and do some experiments, test out what's what in this gun, figure out, try to, try to diagnose the issue. But, you know, I really hope I didn't jack up the barrel. But, you know, you never know. Things happen. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to figure that out. Anyway, that's it for today, October 1st, Saturday, here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.